Chapter 7, The End of the Storm Pete paused to wipe his eyes. That story always made him cry. Made me cry, too. I wiped my eyes with my arm, and then I wiped my arm on my shirt. Go on, I urged. <sighs> he took a deep breath to help himself continue. That day was miserable. That miserable Saturday was the saddest, longest day of my life. I couldn't eat, and I did my chores without even knowing I was doing them. I couldn't play cards after supper. I couldn't sleep. There was an emptiness in my room that matched the one inside me. The whole house seemed empty. The whole outdoors, the whole world. I didn't go around exactly boo-hooing, but my eyes just kept filling up with tears. As soon as I'd wipe one flood away, another would come. I felt like it would be that way for the rest of my life. Sunday passed the same lonely way, and Monday and Tuesday. And on Wednesday, my mother got tired of what she called my moping, and she took me aside to talk some sense into me. You knew that you might lose that dog, she said. I nodded. You knew he wasn't yours. I nodded. Well, you've got to stop moping around. You're going to make yourself sick. I nodded, and I felt like I already was. Listen, we can get another dog. There are dogs all over this county. I shook my head back and forth. Not for me. On Friday, I was in the barn, and I heard this thumping sound. It was the sound that Tornado's tail used to make against the barn door when he wanted to come inside. My eyes flooded. I couldn't help it. I, I knew there was no thumping. It was just a sound that I wanted to hear so bad. My ears, they just heard it. There wasn't any thumping. There couldn't be, but the thumping went on and it really was thumping and it got faster. I wiped my eyes and I looked and Tornado was standing in the doorway. My Tornado was standing in the doorway. Tornado's back! <laughs> I yelled, Tornado, good boy, good boy. And I threw my arms around him. He curved his body the way he did when he was pleased about something and his tail wagged in my face. My daddy came to the door. Tornado's back, I told him. So I see. We don't have to take him back to those people, do we? I tightened my hold on Tornado's neck. Well, I don't rightly know how we could, my daddy said. That man wasn't polite enough to even give us his name. That's true. And if they do find us, well, the dog knows where we are. And he can come over for a visit anytime he wants to. Yeah, but I want him to stay. I do too, my daddy said. But if we have to share him with other folks, we'll do it. Half a tornado is better than none. There's tornado at the doorway. And my father laughed and I laughed. There was a long pause in the cellar. And I asked, did he say, did he stay, Pete? I like a good ending. For seven happy years, Pete said. And the people, they never came and got him, right? No, of course we didn't make the mistake of taking him into town again. Pete stood up, took off his hat, and put it back on his head. He stretched. I'm going for another look outside now. But before he could open the doors, there was a loud knock. Hello in there. Anybody home? It was my father's voice. Storm's over, he cried. And we rushed out through the cellar doors and into the fresh air. My mother hugged my daddy. Oh, Link, I was worried. As soon as my grandmother got up the steps, she hugged him too. And then she gave him a stern look and said, Lincoln, I sure hope you had the good sense to get in a ditch. Look at me, mama. Can't you tell? 
Don't anyone else hug me now. I'm too muddy to hug. My little brother hung back to speak to Pete. Could Tornado really, truly do a card trick? He could. And did you really, truly have a cat named 530? We did. My older brother said, I wish you had told the story about Tornado and the rooster. That's my favorite. Next time, Pete promised. And then he winked at me. If there is one. The end. These other books are also written by Betsy Byers, just in case you want another good story. Thanks for reading with me. Bye now.